Yale Wu Bean's 100 Lessons to Mastering Time Management, Lesson 36: How to Remember Twice as Much with Half the Effort. Hello, everyone. My name is Yale Wu Bean from Yishaneng. I am so happy to be with you now at 6 a.m. on the Shimalaya app. For those of you who have been following my lessons, welcome back. And if you're new here, welcome aboard. I am so happy to have you with us. Time is man's scarcest resource. Once it's used, it can never be regained. So if you're not using your time effectively, or if the time you are spending is only getting you further away from your dreams in life, then stay with me. Listen a while, and I am confident I can help open your eyes to a new path that will get you closer to your dreams. I want to remind you that there are 100 classes in this album, and every class lasts about six minutes. It is updated at 6 a.m. New York City time each morning. Scientific repetition can yield twice the result with half the effort. In the last lecture, we talked about how to retain the information you learn by using active learning techniques, techniques like discussing, practicing, and teaching others, instead of more passive techniques like listening, reading, and watching. We discussed two reasons that active learning works so well. First, it engages both the left and right side of your brain, which improves retention. The second reason. Is that active learning requires action, which requires repetition. Repetition is critical to retaining information. What is the right way to repeat information? This is a very important thing to understand. First, let me tell you a story. Before my son was two years old, he could recognize two thousand Chinese characters. He's not a genius, and this is not a joke. He really could recognize 2,000 Chinese characters before his second birthday. For this discussion, let's not discuss the very popular topic about whether or not it is better to send children to preschool versus letting children grow naturally. Knowing 2,000 characters at such a young age was very beneficial to my son. His ability to read grew earlier in his life, and he learned several other languages as he grew older. My son's ability to learn so many characters at such a young age was so impressive that the Beijing News also specifically interviewed him when he was three years old. In fact, because my child quickly learned Chinese characters, he began to grow interested in cars at a very young age. You see, when he was just two years old, my son would stand at the side of the road and try to name the make and model of all the vehicles he saw. One day, I counted how many vehicles he named correctly and how many logos he could recognize. It was more than 200 in a single day. My son's ability to recognize vehicle logos and car types gradually improved to recognizing the flags of different countries, and then studying different countries and geographies on the globe, which grew into a dream that both of us share as father and son, traveling around the world. Therefore, the skill of retaining information allowed my son to gradually accumulate more and more interests. You may be wondering, how was my son able to learn 2,000 Chinese characters before the age of two? Well, first I should thank my wife, who was a tremendous mother and educator. She taught me a method called word cards, and the concept of the Ebbinghaus memory curve to play cards with children. Fascinated, I decided to further study the Ebbinghaus memory curve, which is also called the forgetting curve. When my child was studying Chinese characters, I made a lot of word cards for him. While playing cards with him, he recognized some words but not others. Whenever he recognized a word, I drew a smiling face on the card, and then marked the date. Over the next few days, I focused on showing him the words he did not recognize. This repetition of the cards he had difficulty remembering increased his retention, and as a result, his literacy greatly improved. Then I used the eight cycles shown in the Ebbinghaus memory curve, so his literacy increased significantly. Let me tell you exactly what the Ebbinghaus memory curve is, or what is known as the forgetting curve. Our brains process millions of pieces of information every day, from the things we see, hear, smell, think about, feelings, etc. If we remembered every single one of these things, we would be overloaded with unneeded information. So the brain is selective about what it remembers. 
Thus, it will forget things unless it deems it important enough to remember. Repeatedly learning the same concept tells your brain that this piece of information is worth saving, and thus it becomes retained in our memories. If we learn a concept only once in class but do not review it after class, then we will retain 5% of the information. This is how much we retain if we do not study. Of course, if we repeat the learning, which we call studying, we will certainly remember more. However, you study the material will determine how you study the material will determine how long you will remember it. Random repetition or studying will extend how long we remember it, but we will eventually forget it. However, if we use a learning technique that emphasizes the eight cycles of the Ebbinghaus memory curve, we can easily remember the material. What on earth, then, are the eight cycles of the Ebbinghaus memory curve? I'm going to tell you. The eight cycles tell us how long after we initially learn a concept that we must study it again before we forget it. The first cycle is five minutes later. This means we should study the material five minutes after first learning it. The second cycle is 30 minutes. That is, 30 minutes after the last time we reviewed it, we should review it again. The third cycle is 12 hours. The fourth cycle is one day. The fifth cycle, two days. The sixth cycle, four days. The seventh cycle, seven days. And the eighth cycle is 15 days later. If you strictly follow the schedule and learning, you will retain most of what you study. Since you know that repetition is so critical, let's repeat the last lesson again. We learn that it is no use to study knowledge only once, and only repeated and active learning will help us retain information. And today we've learned that studying using the Ebbinghaus learning cycles is a form of active learning that will help you retain information most of all. Let me ask you, how many times have you listened to each of these recordings on time management? Have you listened to them eight times? If not, then I recommend that you listen to them repeatedly, and I suggest that you sort out the content you have learned, discuss them with others, and share them with people around you, so that friends and relatives around you can also learn these good methods for time management, improve their efficiency in completing tasks, and enhance their happiness in life. Now, what I'm about to say is very important, and I urge you to remember it. Are you ready? The best way to learn is to teach others to learn, and the more people you serve, the greater your own performance will be. Again, the best way to learn is to teach others to learn, and the more people you serve, the greater your own performance will be. As long as we understand and practice this sentence, whether it is to learn time management, or to learn professional knowledge of your industry, or to teach your children to read, we will all benefit. Now you know how to remember twice as much with half the effort. So go out there and share the knowledge you've learned. And when you do, go to facebook.com slash yishonang to obtain a text transcript of this audio. While you're there, leave a comment and let us know about your experiences applying this knowledge. These audio lessons are translated by Yishonang's partner, Cece, and then recorded by her husband, Justin. I wish you great success today. See you tomorrow.